Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 19th video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. This time we'll cover setting up an object route, a bit of path following. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to have a simple cube, but you could pretend that this is an NPC or some monster or something, and we'll allow it to follow a certain path around this map. Um, there are bigger and better ways of doing it. For example, you would use nav mesh, which is a little bit more advanced. But at this point, as this is a beginner series, nav mesh is not too important. I do teach nav mesh in other tutorial series on my channel. And once you're ready to move on to those tutorial series, then you'll naturally learn about that even more. So what I'm going to do is have a cube set just over here, which is going to represent uh, an NPC. So 3D object cube. I'm going to have this cube as three tall, uh, 0.5 thin, and in fact, no, I'll just keep it as one by one by three. So let's put this back onto the ground. We'll have this as two. Uh, let's actually set the position as zero, zero, and then move it into a better position. So somewhere here. Perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll write a script that will allow this cube to move around of its own free will following a certain path. Let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create a new script. And we'll put this as path follow. And open that up in Visual Studio. <coughs> uh, again, if you have any problems with this script, it'll be in the pinned comments. You can go there, click the link, and you can download it for free. Now, the object of this will be to define a certain position in the game world itself. And we'll also need to basically set an object for a destination, but we'll get around to that momentarily. All we need to do is say, in the class itself, serialize field, and this will be an integer, and this will be the x position. So x, pause and semicolon. Next line will be the Z pos, so serialize field and integer. And rather than predicting Z, it's actually predicted Y, which is fine. We don't need the Y. Next thing will be a game object, so serialize field. And this will be the destination of where the cube will be moving to. So it will be a game object, destination, semicolon. And the final one we'll have as serialize field. And this one will just be a, a position. So we'll have this as int and then position equals one. So this one may not be 100% relative at the moment, but we'll move forward with this. The idea being the whole thing is going to be used uh, as a, a coroutine, so we can piece it together using that. So the start method is going to basically say that the destination um, is going to be at a certain point. Uh, so what that basically means is that moving uh, the um, actual destination object to whatever position we would want. So. Let's start by saying um, our cube wants to move to somewhere here. So let's create that destination object. Game object, 3D object, cube. Let's bring it down to the ground. Uh, so let's have it as one, one, one. And let's move it over here. So this is going to be the first place that it will move to. So 22, one, negative six. So back to here. We'll say destination dot transform dot position because we want to tell it where it's going to equals new vector three and then the position. So we can use the X position, the Y position and the Z position. So we can say X pause comma one comma 
Z, pause, close bracket, semicolon. Now that does mean that we need to set the initial place for this cube. So that is 22 and negative six. So we set that up here. So X pos is equal to 22. Z pos is equal to negative six. So wherever the cube is, whenever we start this, that destination cube, it will move to this position, i.e. the position it is now. And that means that the position should be changed to two. So this is position one. So we can say position plus equals one, semicolon, if I can spell position right. So next thing we need to do is create a coroutine. And the coroutine is going to be uh, the next location. And what we'll do is we'll make it so as the cube can move between a couple of different destinations. So this will always be the first destination. So down below here, below update, we'll say I enumerator and we'll call it next destination, open close bracket, open curly bracket. If I can spell I enumerator right. I really can't spell it. Why am I not typing that right? There we go. So I enumerator, next destination. And generally what we need to do here is say yield return new wait for seconds and we'll have this as one semicolon and I don't know what I've done wrong here I must have mistyped it let me try again I enumerator next destination there we go Oh, close bracket and there's our curly bracket so after one second what we'll do is, in fact no we'll change that to three seconds just to give it a little bit more time and we now need to set the x position uh, x position and y position as something different sorry x and z so let's take our cube and let's move it to here so 16 and negative 6 so x pos equals 16 semicolon Z pos equals negative six. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? 16, negative six, yes. So before all that, we need to say if, and in brackets, position equals one, then that's when we open curly bracket and do those three lines of code. If I can type it correctly, there we go. So it's saying that if position is equal to two, I should say, apologies, uh, which it will be after this one, then it means that it moves to here. So we now need to say this line of code once again. So after three seconds, it changes the position and moves it and then sets the position number as plus one once again. Perfect. That does mean that after this first position change to one, we now need to set the coroutine started. So start coroutine and in brackets, next destination, open oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Now that means, so we've got our first and second position all in place. So let's copy these right here and let's go below here and say if position is three, which it will be after here, then wait for three more seconds and let's move the position of the uh, destination. Once again, let's move it to here. So 20 and zero. So 20 and zero. And after the third time, let's set the position back to one. So now we need to set the original position back up so we can copy that, place it at the top and say if position is equal to one, then we set the original position, which is 22 and negative six. So 22 and negative six. So what's happening here is that we are repeating this process over and over and over. And what it essentially means is that it's repeating that path 
But in order to do that, there's more that has to actually be placed in here. And in the update method, this is where we need to put the actual cube to be moving. So we can say transform dot look at and in brackets destination dot transform. So it always looks where it's going. Next, we need to actually move this object. So we can say transform dot position. I really have trouble spelling position, don't I? Position equals vector three. And in brackets, we now need to put transform dot position. And then we need to say destination dot transform dot position comma and then we'll say something like something really low because it's kind of speed based so 0.05f and then we can trial this out semicolon so let's make sure that all of this is going to work so it should be vector 3 dot move towards and that should complete at least this section of the script uh, let me get rid of the annotations just so we can see this a little clearer so what we're saying is when the script starts we need to set the position of the destination and then add one to the destination and start the coroutine it then means down here that we move to this position and it will move the destination it will do it again and again. When it gets back to position one, that's where we could theoretically repeat this process. But for now, let's head back into Unity and let's make sure that we can actually set this up correctly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer on the destination and also going to rename these as well, just so as we know what's what. So on our destination cube, let's turn off mesh renderer Let's rename this to destination and we'll just rename cube to NPC. Now let's attach the path follow script to the NPC. And down here we can see we just need to attach destination right there. And let's press play and see how this pans out at least for now. So there we go, you can see the cube has done that and it's moving all around like that. So the speed looks like it's too fast, but that's fine. Let's change that. Here, let's change this to 0 0.01 and let's see how that reacts now. Uh, when it's done, let's press play. And I think the cube kind of blended into the ground a little bit, but that's something that we can sort out later on. So there we go, it's moving towards that destination, it's moving there, and now it'll move to the other one over there. Let's change this now. So rather than one here, this needs to be two so as the cube doesn't start going into the ground. That's fine. And ultimately, what we need to do is we need to now set it so as this can essentially repeat itself. So let's add in another variable, serialize field. And we'll have this as a bool. And we'll say, um, what could we call it? Reset move. Um, by default, we'll just have this as false, but I am going to instantly set it to true. Uh, reset move equals true, semicolon. And in void update, what we'll do down here is we will say if reset move equals false then do the following and we can say reset move equals true start coroutine and in brackets next destination oh close bracket close bracket semicolon and at the very end where we set the position back to one we can also say reset move equals false, semicolon, and save the script. 
So what should happen now is we should be able to repeatedly see this cube moving from place to place. And let's actually set this as maybe two seconds between each one, just so as we're not wasting too much time. So let's resave the script, head back into Unity, let it compile, and we should be able to see this imaginary NPC follow the path that we have set for him by reaching each destination. So let's press play and take a look. Give it a moment. And we should enter the game view any second. There we go. So now it's moving that way. Now he's moving that way. Now back that way. And now back that way. So you can see that the process is just being repeated until he gets here. So what does that mean? Well, it ultimately means that this has now fallen down. So does it really mean that we need to reset move every time? It probably does. So if we have reset move in each of these, we should be able to repeat that process over and over. So next time is going to be the last part of this um, beginners series for Unity 6. And we'll look at some settings to build the game itself and to play it in an actual executable file. And we'll also look a little bit into scenes. So remember to subscribe, click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I will see you in the next one.